All right, yo, I'm back. Um, I can't I can't change my resolution right now while I'm recording because if I do, it'll stop my recording. So my point, what I was saying is that when you do when you use a Studio One, if you go inside the display option and you uh you change this, what it does, it makes it makes Studio One bigger, right? The mix of tracks, the words, everything is bigger. But what it does is that it makes the the instruments, the VSC instruments, very large also. And when you're using the laptop and you're traveling, your instruments take over the whole screen. Like, literally, man. It takes over the whole screen. And it's no way you can make just the tracks and everything else larger and just make the instruments smaller. And... When you, but when you do this in Bitwig, I don't have to go change my resolution outside of my, you know, inside my, my, you know, my manual options on my computer. I can keep that the way it is. But, you know, like I say, I could just go inside Bitwig Studio and just right click and just press increase. You know, just like that. And then I'm good. And, you know. My effects and my plugins stay the same size, stay the size that it fit. And when I open it up, it just it just is good. It don't it don't it don't cover the whole screen like uh Studio One do. So that's to me that's very important. Because I, I'm not working the office and I'm out and I work, you know, when I'm traveling. All right, to go to the next thing, you got the FX selector. I the FX selector is just like the instrument selector that I showed you. So you can select different instruments. Simultaneously, just like how you can put, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like you know, you drop same thing. But I was showing you, you can you can press automation, and you could change a certain effect on that certain sound, back and forth. You know that's dope. You know, on Studio One, once you drop effect on that track. It's either that's it. You know, you can mute it, but it's no automation for the mute button. You get what I'm saying? It's no automation for the mute button. See on studio on, on Bitwig, you got automation even for the mute button. Just to turn that instrument off. You get what I'm saying? That that's 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 deal breaker. You know, uh you can't you can't do automation the turn that uh that mute button off in Studio One on the on the plugins, so you can never get that type of thing accomplished because once you drop the effects on Studio on that track in Studio One, you could do automation. You could do automation, or you can do uh, effect event, which serves a good purpose. But if you're using something like FX Selector. You can have a whole bundle of effects in one thing, then you have a whole bundle of another effects, and then change it up and affect that same sound just by doing automation, just by clicking a button. I hope y'all understand what I mean by that, man. That's that's creative and that's deep. I like that. All right, the next thing I, I'm about to talk about is uh, uh, drop, drop MIDI, create sound for it. And this simple. This ain't really a big deal, but I like it. Uh, let me delete this. Let me see if I can find me a MIDI. Let's say you exporting some MIDI files out from another DAW, and or let's say, you know, uh, or let's say you exported. Some MIDI files from one DAW and you want to drop it into another DAW, right? And let me try this right quick. Let me see what happened. Hold on. This is MIDI, right? Okay, matter of fact, prime example. Prime example. See, now you know what I'm gonna do. Okay, yeah, this is my folder. I got I have a folder that I've been having for years of uh, it's called MIDI files, right? And I have thousands of songs of MIDI files of old school music of every instrument. 
Then I can go if I want to chop a sample, come over the idea. So as you can see, this is Billy Jean. <clears throat> if I drop this in, right? And I and it creates a whole group for it for every instrument on that MIDI, which is you no know, studio one do the same thing. But the only thing I'm talking about is that studio one, you would have to go in and drop a instrument on every one of these. You have to find the instrument for it. Eventually, you're going to have to do it anyway, but just to test it and hear how it sounds or, or listen to what it's playing, you have to go drop something in it to hear it. But in Bitwig, once you drop the MIDI, it already has a, a instrument for it. It don't be the best instrument. It'd be the same thing, but when you press play, you can know what it's, what it's playing. Like, for example, like this. Hold on, why is it looping? T turn the loop off, my bad. Now, as you're listening to it, you know, you can go in and just... This instrument about to come in, I think so. You click on it. You get what I'm saying? So... Right now as I'm doing that, I could change this. Now they got a lot of power right quick. Let me let me change it. Let me change that right quick. I'm gonna change it to accordion. I think I'm gonna play it back. This is the one I'm focusing on right here. That's when you automatically just drop the MIDI in. It has a, a you know a random polysynth sound to play it. Now. I'm not even gonna show you in Studio One. You just gotta drop it in yourself if you don't believe me. Just, just get it. You know what? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you for all the critics that like to get on your, your website and talk shit. You know, instead of just, you know, accepting the fact that some dogs do things that other dogs don't. So I'm gonna go to my same files. I'm gonna go into my midis. What are my midis at? Hold on, my sounds. I'm going to my MIDI files, and I'm going to go to one of those folders. What, what one with the Michael Jackson? I wish I could find. Let me find that one. You know, I'm going to click MIDI, and I'm going to type in Billy. Billy Jean, right? So I'm, I'm going to get that MIDI. I'm going to drop it here. Do you want to load general MIDI sounds for this file? Oh. I take that back. I was wrong, people. I was wrong. They added with four. So they do. So now we're going to play it. That's good. That studio won't do that now. That's good. Because I actually didn't test this one out. I was just actually writing it, you know, down what I like what Bitwig do. But I didn't test test that specific thing out in Studio One. Well, the old version I did. But it's not as loading up different sounds. What would be dope is that if it, old, if it load up uh, exactly what the name of that MIDI and find an instrument for it. So this might, I think this might peak. I think this might peak. Hold on. So let me open this. Okay. Oh, man. Really? Let's get to our mute. New, uh, uh, so hold up.
I, I peep one thing that they don't do. Okay, no, no, no. This this might be the. Hold up, that might be the name of it. Let me play this. Let me just play it. Let's hope that it don't crack. start singing and everything. I was about to get in my bag. Um so that's that's dope that uh they they do that now. And uh but what it, I know what I noticed that's what Studio One is good at with Bitwig do is because what I noticed it actually no 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 let me let me double check before I say that. I was thinking like do it play So if so, Studio One find that specific sound for it, because if you notice, this say uni strings. This say electric guitar mute. This say new age ooze. This say matrix strings. This say F bass. This say wild electric piano. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> I'm about to start peeking when you do that because I got the so yeah now with that part they both good but Studio One got big wig on that because they they both drop a sound to that MIDI but Studio One actually uh the only thing it don't do that Studio One do, now take that back, it do. It got the name down here. It has the name down here where well, you don't even got to name them. They already have the name for it. Okay, so. Standard kit. Can you fold it up? No, you can't. All right, so that's good. That's dope. Now you notice that on here, when you drop, when you drop all these, I don't think you can fold them up. Let me open that way back up. Now, now you play it back in this one. So, it, what it did, it found a basic drum, which is good, better than big wig on that part. But when you go to the tab and you go to the the group on a mixer, and you press that, you you can close those and open them right up, and they have each one already named in that group. And it tell you. So all you gotta do is just go find a hit string, string pad, still good. You can close it, minimize that specific track. Even though in Studio One you still can group, but Studio One has a problem with kind of like open up the uh like grouping grouping certain tracks and you know expanding them on the mixer like this. And it lets you know it has a problem with it. That's why I love it. You can just click right here and just pick whatever group you want to use. I love that. Then on top of that, when you expand right here, the names is still right here. 
So the names is on the, the track and the names is on the, the mixer track. But when we was in Studio One, the names wasn't right here, but they was on the instrument. You get it? So that situation is whatever you like. So, but, uh, you know, I like, I like, I actually like them both. And it's beautiful, but I just like how they group it more. And, uh, and Bitwig for us the tracks, you know, like this, it's simple. And I still can go and, you know, click right here and add my, my own effects knobs and tweak everything to it and stuff like that. It's more convenient. All right. Um, the next thing is, uh, you can't see this, but it's called drum pads light up. This is this is not a deal breaker for any dog. It just it's something that I really like. And I, you can't really see it right now, but like I was telling you, I got an MPK 249 and I got a keyboard and I got drum pads on it. You can actually pull it up and look at what type of keyboard I got online. And when I'm using Big Wig, based on the color of my track and whatever track I click on. So for example, this track is purple. When I click on this one, my drum pads change to this color. So that means that if I got a lot of tracks like this, you know, hold on, let me delete. Like this and and you know, oh, they got load up. You know, if I got a lot of tracks like this and, you know, stuff like that, for every, when I click on each one of them, my key, my drum pads will light up. My drum pads will light up and kind of like identify me and let me know what track I'm using. I love that. And all my drum pads will change to that color. In Studio One, they don't change to that color. Now, in Studio One, the only thing that change, have a color is... It's the impact drum machine where you can click right here and add a drum kick in and you can change the color of these. You know, you can change it, you can change the color of these. You can right here, you can go right here and change it whatever color you want. But it don't change the color of your drum pad unless it's a specific keyboard that has to be used with Studio One that does it. But for right now, the keyboard that I got, I spent a lot of money for, the Akai MPK249 that's updated, that works for Studio One, it don't do it. It don't work, it don't, it don't work that. So that's something small, but I really like that. That helps my flow out and kind of let me know because when I want to mute a track, when I want to mute a certain track with the buttons that's on my keyboard, you know, I could find it real quick by seeing the color of the, the drum pad. So that's that's not a deal breaker, but for some people it is, and for some people it's not. You know, it's just you know letting you know what 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 one do, what the other one don't do. That's all it's about. All this about. Uh, let me minimize this right quick. <clears throat> all right, the next thing we're talking about is uh. Well, I talked about this in my in my last uh and uh why I switched this bit wig. I'm gonna talk about it in this version also. It's called you know, real quick, default plugins not in my way. And like I say, you know, everybody keeps saying get another screen and all that crap and I'm not doing all that, man. I I I I'm done that. You know. Delete these right quick because there's too many of them. You know, I just I just love the fact of you know the plugin right here. So whatever I want to do up here is this is right here. You know, I still can tweak this and and um, automate it if I want to without closing out the closing the plugin because maybe I want to affect something on the plugin. And see what I'm doing on the track as I do it. You know, so for example, like. All right, so let me record this right quick. All right, let me make this big, stretch.
scratch it out. So. Okay. So normally in Studio One, say if I want to tweak this knob right here, map control it, and I want to, you know, animate it, I mean, uh, automation it, and I click right here. I can still, I can see, if I go to Arch, I can see, I can see what I'm doing. So let me, let me go back. So let me go back and... Go to map controller and click that one, and that's called shape, right? And I'm gonna go to the phase four. You know, I can kind of see what I'm doing as I go. For example, let's say I only want this effect to come in right here, because Studio One don't have event uh, plugin events like how I'm. Mean, no, I'll take that back. Bitwig don't have plugin events where you you cut a specific part on the audio. And you add uh, that effect on that specific part. And in Studio One, you definitely can't add effect on a MIDI event. You have to convert it to audio to do it. But in Studio One, like you don't have to have no event. It's automation. So for example... You know, if I got this knob right here, right? All I have to do is just, if I want the sound effect to come in right here, I could just press this, press play. Just like that, press play. So that's good for if you, if you, if you got vocals and you got a delay and you want that delay to only come out, come in come in at the end of the vocals or something like that that's all you have to do it's just that simple you know the, now the event plug in the, uh on stu in studio one the events when you put the plugins that's still dope but it seemed more faster to me like this it just you know because you can do so many automations and one specific thing so my point is this i can go back and get this add this to that same knob I go back and add this, add this to the same knob. I go get this button, add it to the to add it to the same knob, and instead of dropping multiple uh, effects just on, you know on my you know on my VST or do it one by one, I could just press this again, press play, which that part come in. So now it it did it did tweak all these. You are gonna notice all these move. Each one of them. Now you can drop them down to see all of them. I love that, man. I love it. I love it. The reason why? Because they help you come up with so much create creative ideas, man. That's what it's about. If you, it's either you're an inventor. Or you're a follower, man. Which one are you? You know. Um, I'm gonna go to the next thing. Uh, default plugins. Nah. Okay, drum squares match drum pad. I might only be having this problem, but I I can't show you. But on my drum pads, for some reason, like when I okay, when I go to instrument, this is when you, out the stock, out the box, when you download your drum machine. And I go get my click on my drum machine. I add a preset. Right? I mean, I don't know about y'all. I come from the old school where it's kind of like we're using drum machines and all the analog stuff. And, you know, I want my squares to match my squares on the drum machine on the, the in the DAW. So that means that if I click this one. I want the square on my drum pad, on my MIDI drum pad, to be the same thing. Like that. So as I'm going up, it's matching. But for some reason in Studio One, you know, with my drum machine, with my drum machine, with my MIDI keyboard, 
on the impact. When I click this one, it actually, I have to click my pad 13. We ain't gonna do it right now because I got the other door open. But when I click my pad 13 at the top, it plays the one at the bottom. Now, I had to go do a preset. I had to go do a tweak where I had to go literally through these and change each one of these like this. And, um, you know, you know, I made a preset like this. It's called this one, 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 you know, one eleven drum setup. Where what I did is that these drum pads match, you know, my drum pads on my keyboard. So when I press the my pad one, pad one is going to play pad one, B one, pad two, so on going up. But, you know, in, in XP, you got more than one level. You got all the way A through H, right? A through H and everything. And, and once you get to a certain level, you know, they don't link right. You have to try it out. But as far as the A part, when using drums, they all link up good. But, but when it comes to my presets, it's nothing you can do about it. So it, it's that's not really a deal breaker, but it's like that's simple. Like why would why why you don't just create it that way, man? It always been that way. That's the best functioning way I I can you know. If I'm if I'm touching my pad one at the bottom, the pad one should match the drum pad on the on the damn screen. Instead of pressing pad one on my keyboard and it's and it's clicking on pad one up here. So that means that as I go up on my on my MIDI keyboard. I'm actually going down on my drum pad, on my drum machine in the dog. You know, so you got to go tweak stuff and all that. It's, come on, they, it's too, it's, it's, that's, that's so simple. That should never be that way. So, you know, why bother with it, man? But um, to some people, that's a deal breaker. To some people, that's not. All right, the next thing. Um. CPU is better than in studio. I mean, not in our uh, bit wig. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Studio One CPU is a CPU hog, and I'm gonna show y'all. Well, I can't show y'all now. I take that back because, uh, as you can see, me to record this video, I have to use my, the voice meter virtual sound card instead of using my M Audio track sound card. Um. So I can't, you know, the CPU ain't going to function right. So uh, I got to figure out a better way of doing that when I'm recording videos so I can do a tutorial better, breaking down that 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 example. But C Studio One is a CPU hog. You could drop one, and, and I have a powerful computer. I have, in my computer, I have 32 gigabytes of RAMs. Uh, uh, what is it, i7? I think it's an i7 processor. You know, it's it's a pretty update, you know, good job, man. You know, uh but in Studio One I drop one layer instrument, the CPU is shooting all the way up. And people be like, yo, once you bounce, you gotta bounce it. Yeah, I bounce it. But I gotta play it first. And if it's shooting up to a point where you can't play it, why the hell how I'ma bounce it? You gotta play it first where it's sounding good. And it's not cracking first. That's what I don't like about Studio One when it comes to the CPU. Now they got, uh, and if you bring the resolution up, not the resolution, but the, if you bring the the, uh, if you bring the separate up, it's gonna be a delay on your instruments. Even though the the, the level of the CPU will shoot down, just like in Studio One, the level will shoot down, but you'll have a series of delay, just like right here. Like, look where it's jumping at right here. And I'm not even playing nothing. I just got this this thing in. I just got this in. These two instruments and this drum machine. Ain't nothing, you know, this is the only thing playing. And watch when I play it. And look where it's already shooting at. Yeah. Now I'm going to turn my internet off. But that's what I normally do when I'm doing. I turn all that stuff off because a lot of things in your computer can you know run run up your CPU, so you gotta turn certain stuff off. You know, 
And look what's shooting up just for that one instrument. So imagine I get a layered track. You know, in Studio One, is a bit weird. It's like, it's not even jumping yet. It's not. It's nothing going on. So let's see what it'll do if I get a layer. I'm going to go get a layer with a whole bunch of instruments on it. I'm not going to play it because I know it's going to crack because of my sound card. But Well, that do the same thing. As of right now, but if I'm if I'm really playing it, if I, if I really change my now nah, I'm gonna go change my sound card. Uh, if I can't change it, I can't record what I'm doing. Damn. Ah, uh, but if I change this to this, you know, it won't be none of this. But to make a long story short, it shoots up like crazy, man. 